All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Firstly, thank you for taking out the uh, time for the and uh, giving us an opportunity to see what we can do to the organization of the business. Uh, firstly, I would just like to start off with a brief introduction on Redmond and then uh, we'll update with Namo. So, uh, as you know, Redmond is one of the largest value added distributors in the uh, region, uh, especially in the UK area. And we are a listed company. You know, the, the journey has been incredible for uh, us starting from one brand, one product category to uh, a 7.7 billion distribution supply chain distribution provider. With uh, spanning over uh, 235 international brands and serving around 37 emerging markets. Uh, so, I am a part of a business unit called as Business Application Group. Uh, okay. and, there are a lot of time, the yeah. on prem infrastructure. Hello. Hi, uh, is anyone trying to say something? I'm sorry if I have interrupted you. Hi, Hassel. And uh, now your sound is clear. Can you just repeat uh, previously because we we lost you some time. So can you just repeat it so we can? Now it's clear now. Hi, Hashil. Can you just check your audio right now? Uh, I think Hashil is facing some uh, technical issues. So uh, I think, Ralph, we can start with uh, Sage and uh, Nama introduction now. Uh, sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, uh, Ralph, we can take a start the Sage introduction and uh, Nama introduction. Rob, are you there? Rob, can you hear us? Hello? 
Hello, can you hear me? Yes, Rob, now I can hear you. Okay, guys, so a uh, very warm welcome to all the attendees. Uh, In the region. We are a multi product shop which uh, represents multiple products from across the world and we, pre we present a solution for every customer depending on the requirement. So basically, we understand the requirement and then we position a relevant product. Our core values are ethical and taking care of the customers. We keep customers in the center of our uh, business uh, model and depending on the requirements. We want to establish a great relationship with them and do ethical business with morality and all the business ethics as a principle. I hand over the next uh, slide to my colleague. Hi, good morning. Uh, so my name is Simran. As uh, Anand mentioned, we deal in multiple enterprise softwares like ERP solutions, CRM solution, HRM. Uh, and accounting solution, depending on each company's requirements. Today, particularly, we'll be talking about Sage 200. Uh, so these are some of the few core modules like GL, AR, AP, and tax module. These are some of the components that make Sage 200. So further to that, there are additional modules depending on further requirements of your company like multi-currency and multi-warehousing. This software is also FTA compliant. Uh, I'm handing over to Rob now, our technical director. Good morning, everyone. So I'm just going to show you the brief screens of the software because the, with the limited time, I cannot demonstrate the live system. It will take a little time for doing some entries and uh, generating the report. So I have taken, which is completely used one database with the exact data. So I'm going to demonstrate main screens, how the functions will work and what are the key points and everything we can discuss going through with the slides in this presentation. So first I want to initially start with the main screen which is Sage home screen. In here, you can see some of the interesting modules, which is in the market. They are looking for the separate add-on or softwares, which is type of fix asset, delivery management, and Sage do have that like a BI report, intelligence report inbuilt. We have one basic intelligence report as well, and the PDC management is already there in the core module as well. So. Tax, as Simran mentioned, the taxes, we have the FTA format printout and the sales tax calculation, purchase tax calculation, reverse charge mechanism, as well, uh, zero rated uh, uh, report separately. So those kind of thing we can uh, get, we can get these reports from the uh, same system and the same time as uh, one of the key I don't biggest module in this system, but I can say it's a module which is we can have our CRM in place and we can call for the RFQ and we can evaluate the uh, quotations and we can do number of things in this system and the alert management is there in this system as well. So uh, again, if I'm talking, we have the two level of the account, that means a single account mode and multiple account mode with the accounts code we can generate it so again i'm going forward for the next screen to just to show how we can define the chart of accounts as you can see here we have account and we can create the sub account there is 32 account types because 
uh, the generally we have four account types, five account types in the accounts. It's uh, income, expenses, asset, liability, and equity. But here that also again it will divide it for two, three phases. That means fixed asset, other asset, current asset, uh, liability source, other current liability. So balance sheet account. So we have so much thirty-two categories in the account type, and we do have branch module if you are using multiple branch we can take the branch wise report branch wise profit and loss as well we can take interconnect with multiple branch as a this system and the branch system and uh, department wise report so internally mostly the pnl is generating by the department nowadays in the market that means you can just check your departments it's a which department is giving if you have incomes by now we are into the multiple business we'll see you are in the fmcg food and beverages so you can create your income accounts by the department and who what are the relevant expenses you can post it to the beverage department and the uh food department so it will give you the complete pnl by department some companies do use this module calling like uh, department wise in, uh, internal that means it department expenses it department income it department assets what they have so we can define the chart of account by department as well and we have foreign currency it's an add-on module if as a Sage 200, we don't give whole product to you. That means which is irrelevant for your business. If you don't want to use multi-currency, yes, you can happily go with the core modules, which is having the GL account, uh, payable account, receivable, and inventory, BOM. So those kind of, uh, sorry, BOM is not there in the core module. So those kind of minimum requirements for the uh, medium sized company and the small companies it's perfectly full fit with the purchase orders order control and the sales order sales order control so we have multi currency as i don't if you wish that you are companies dealing with multi currency yes you can purchase as add on so if is it not that you can eliminate so that is the one of the core feature you no need to pay which is you are not using in your system so I'll go just to show you the next screen. This is journal account listing screen. And another one option in the stage which we can say every screens, every master file screen you can find, see here, save grid one option, which is mean the save grid. You can design this view screen for you. That means now I just kept the as a chart of account account number and the account name and the account type if you want you can put its journalist allowed or not what is the department name what is the group name so we can take it to this screen and this all the screens can export it to excel anytime so in chart of account it's not that much relevant but whenever you are going to the item screen item screen also will show in the same i think i have a screen in forward i will show you in that place and if you notice here, here in the last uh, 421011 payroll account, it's multiple accounts. So parent account is the pay, uh, payroll liability. So if it's a double dot is coming, it is going as a sub account. So we can create the sub account. You can take the individually per person payroll account how much you paid for whole year whole month whatever it is so again you can take it for complete header that means total payroll liability in the one report so that is grouping function is already inbuilt in the system so i'll go for the uh, next screen which is mostly interested part in the system in the for the trading companies we can define the item with the serial number if is it i have done some implementation for the mobile and the it sectors so it traders so they might have one barcode and serial number for each and in every item so if i'm talking about mobiles there are there is one number called imi number imie so that number is different item to item 
So we have a module for that, which is giving the serial number item. So serial numbers, we can uh, make it and they are also, we can allow duplicate serial number because some items are coming, the 10 serial number will be the same. So we can allow it or we can block it. And we, if is it for the going for the FMCG food manufacturing, or we have some day-to-day -day expiry date item, pharmaceutical tea items, so something like that, we have the lot number and expiry date. So I can define the item when I'm defining it. Whenever I'm purchasing, I put expiry date is required. Without expiry date, it won't allow you to enter the system. And expiry date tracking report is available. It will show you which and all items with the batch number going to be expired. So and so date, the next month end or this month. So we can filter it and we can have that. And of course, we have multiple unit of measure. That means you can purchase it by boxes and convert it to the pieces. It's we can define unlimited unit of measure because some companies have in the boxes for 10, 12, 15, 30. So we can have a one box equal to 30 pieces, one box equal to 20 pieces. So we can create, we can define as per you how you want. Some companies, they will purchase it by rolls and they will divide it for the meter so we have that also dimension item also we have as add on module if you are selling some item by the square feet we can design it for that so role is equal to 200 square feet or 300 square feet we can define it so whenever we are purchasing it will purchase by role and stocking unit you can define it you want to stock that item by roll or you want to stock that item by square feet so so one of the interesting key feature in the system whenever you purchase the roll it will automatically calculate if you are stocking by square feet it will automatically show you in the inventory 200 square feet available in the store to sell otherwise you want to keep it as a roll while selling it will go as a square feet so it will show you 0 0.1 0 0.25 roll is available based on your square feet if it's which uh, assume we are considering one roll as 200 square feet if you sold 50 square feet it will show you 0 0.5 rolls is available otherwise you can ha have it in opposite side you can keep it stocking method for the square feet so it will show 50 square feet 100 square feet is available in the store so we will go forward. We have multi warehouse option, image attachment for the each and every items. We can create, upload our item image in the system. This is the item view uh, of the master file. So you can have unique code for every item. Item description in that also we have the option for the pre description because one some customers or some companies they highly needed description while purchasing they will write one description but while selling it might change so they have one two three descriptions so which is you want to print it in your stationaries we can define it the description one or two or three so based on that if you are having gr we should go with uh, another description yes we can do that also description three will print it there so for the understanding purpose i just created the screen with the description one and two and group and item category in the same screen we can put our available quantity we can add our selling price and we have our cost price and but how much in the po how many uh, quantity you want to deliver as per the sales order so those kind of thing we can take it to the same screen you don't need to generate any specific report it will be like pre-designed for you whenever you open this that will get upload update the same time you also having the save grid option you can just transfer it to the excel for your some adjustment or doing some excel activities nice. so i'm just from the item i'm moving to the customer very quickly because uh, we don't have that much time to go very detaily i'll try as much as i can explain here so we have uh, customers by groups 
we can create the groups and we can filter the report as per the group and we can inside the group again we can have a areas so just we will uh, assume you have a group called retail and wholesale customers doing the business in the dubai and we can define the area dubai abu dhabi ras al kaima for the all the sub emirates so whenever you are filtering the report under the general group you want to see the receivable report only for the dubai customers yes we can filter in that report area by area wise so you can easily collect or if someone visiting for that client directly you can give the report and we have the option for the sales representative and we have the automation calculation for the sales commission based on the we have formula it means we can give it in the two way one is for the profit margin uh, commission and one is for the turnover commission so and in that also we have five six brackets that means 0 to 100000 he will get 10% 100000 to 500000 he will get 25% uh, so we can define that up to five labs so that also available in the system and that The report only for acknowledgement purpose. It will can download it. It will not pass any GL entry. You are free to do how much in that uh, commission. If you are doing some adjustment, you can do it and post it as a journal uh, to your books of account or your salary account. So we are. It is a manual journal. We can generate it from the system. It will not going to be auto posted. So it's always it's open. you can decide it you are going to generate the commission payment or not and customers we can have a multi currency and we can have a price list based on the customer type so i can define 10 15 price list because of the location or i can temporarily put them under 10% discount price list or i can change it any time so those kind of thing and we have the emirates wise report for the tax purpose so i can select the customer by emirates and i can see the uh, report as well and if is it i'm putting that customer is not tax registered you can take that also and customer trn number also you can feed it in the system and if i'm telling there is some hold button for the all the supplier and customer admin can hold the customer supplier and items without posting some entries by users so we have that uh, control in the system in the permissions i will show you in the coming slide the permission screen also i added in the presentation so we can go through that so i'm going forward to uh, see the pos so this is our default po screen how it's look so we have the uh, three steps of the pos i mean so we can purchase uh, place the order and order we can if you are having the multi warehouse in the number of location you can define it in the order itself which location it should go and we have the import cost that means additional cost allocation for the each and every Uh, purchase order so you can add multiple lines for the allocation which is freight cost and the landing cost we call in the normal term so whenever you are selecting the po one item it will show in that warehouse what is the availability and what is the quantity you are ordering and after ordering will how much you are giving the confirmation that means you can place the order for 100 numbers but you are just confirming for the first uh, grv 50 so you can take the grv also split and after that finally you can join all the grv and put one invoice or single grv for the single invoice we can merge it any time so there is a three steps which i explained the first it's a uh, order and you can receive the item so it will be in the accrued payable so after processing the invoice it will go for the payable and we have the automated order number 
an automated GRV number or you can use it as a manual. We can configure it and order due dates and supply invoice number also in the same screen. And moreover, we have in the sales and the purchase both screen that discount percentage you can give it by the line by line. So assume in the only one item you are getting 50% discount and other everything is normal rate, you can have it in the line where you are seeing here discount percentage. And we can have an invoice, purchase order, and the sales order in the both way. It's inclusive of VAT or exclusive of VAT. The price is inclusive of VAT, the 500 plus VAT or 500 is include VAT. So there is that option as well. And the Finally, down you can see if I have the additional cost for this uh, PO, it's 9000. So I allocated that item. So, discount percentage for the whole invoice. That means uh, my total invoice value after line discount, I got 10,000. In that, also, my supplier is giving another 10%. I can give the discount level for the document that is complete PO. So, in here again, this screen what you are seeing now, this is the purchase sort of control screen we call. You can see all the GRVs, what and all processed, one, what is unprocessed and what is completed and what is cancelled. And you can take the GRV uh, preview from here. And the, another one thing is if is it, you are regularly purchasing the same item, might be if it is a trading company, we are talking about spices and the, some FMCG item. There will be the purchase order items are always same. It means some one, one to 200 item. They are ordering it same. Only quantity and pricing can be changed. So Sage having one option, you can pull the old purchase order and you can load that as a template and you can just fill the quantity. If it's pricing is same, you can just keep that pricing and which item you are not ordering, you can remove that or you can mark it that as a zero. So that item will print as a zero, we are not ordering. So that option is already available and sales order, we can load it as a template. And the purchase order also same way, we can load it as a template in any time. And, uh, here you can filter it by the customer to see what and all orders are processed. Here I have the status drop down, which is give, will give you the merged orders, what and orders are cancelled by customer by total. So those kind of thing we can have it in the same screen itself. And here also the same screen you can save it to the Excel if you have seen in the top bar there is option called save grid in the most of the screen having this feature you can save all the screen to excel what you are customizing what you are seeing here so this is one of the uh, sales order screen which you are seeing now so this sales order it's also having the three levels so you can have a quotation level you have a stationary for quotation so after quotation, you can convert it to the sales order. So it will be the save button is for the sales order level. So you have the order number and the same screen will again convert it to the invoice. So invoicing level here also we can have line wise tax printout and line wise tax changes. That means you have 20 items with the standard rate. One item will be sometimes zero rate or exempted in very rare case. So you can define it by line to line, which item having the tax, which item don't have the tax. And the selling time, you can select the warehouse from which warehouse this item should be out. And the same time in the screen, it will show you what is the available quantity in that warehouse. And this screen also, you can add columns, which is available and you can remove column, which is not relevant for you. And we have the delivery methods screen in the after document. You can see here, you can define it, which way it's 
going to be delivered to your end customer by cargo or by land by road anyway and delivery date we can mention it and we can take the print out of that so this is one of the longest sales order i made it to show so it's like uh, up to now we have tested uh, around 600 line items also it's working but no one reached there but as a personal consultant i have experience on that because i did that r d for to give the demos and everything but it's the maximum line so 500 to 600 is working fine more than that i never tested but i hope that is more enough that all the lines will print in the stationary as well and here you can give the discount for some line which i explained to you so from the line number nine to end i given everywhere 10 percent discount everything is five percent rate and the tax type is standard and in future some items are having multiple tax value we'll assume that fmcg having five percent electronic having two percent value it won't happen but system will support to up to that level you can configure two percent wet code separately and five percent wet code separately and you can choose it based on the item this is the one and moreover we can keep item wise default wet code so what i'm trying to say in that fmcg item is a five percent you can define all the fmcg item initial configuration this all will calculate five percent so if it's a service item, it's a 10%. Yes, I can configure that sales code while purchasing it's 10%, while selling it's 5%. Yeah, we can do in that way as well. So it, you can have it default one. And of course, you have the option in the screen. Anytime you can change it. If is it some customers not coming under that category to charge the VAT, yes, you can make it there 0% or what is the relevant code. And we have configured all the VAT codes and everything as per the current UAE FTA rule. So in future, if it's some update is coming, yeah, we are happy to do that as well, the reporting formats and the VAT configuration. And this is again like a inquiry screen. It's like you can use it as a small CRM. It will work for customer, it will work for supplier, it will work for your chart of account, it will work for your inventory item. Basically, if I'm saying in one word, it will work for all master files. So here what you can put your customer and you can see the transaction history, total history of the customer. And it will show you with the reference number what is debit and credit it happened. And again, if you are going up, you can see order screen so we can see the what and all sales orders are cancelled sales orders are pending or we can go for the quotation screen in that quotation screen you can see what and all quotations are approved or pending or cancelled those kind of thing and going for the interesting uh, part in this screen another you have the post date check management in the system so post data checks, you can see which post data check is want to deposit for behalf of this customer, what and all post data checks are available with us. You have another screen for only for the post data check with the date, which date it's coming to the bank for your supplier and customer. Both sides, we have the reports for that. And the supplier and customer inquiry tab also, you can see the post data check. And the same concept here also, this screen is customizable you can add columns you can remove the columns and the same time you can save this column to your excel so this is one uh, transaction which is we can call customer uh, receipts that means you are receiving the payment from the customer so in here also if you select the customer you can click the balances in the net total down it will show what is the balance total and what are the invoices are done up to now what is the credit note and what is the payments so that history you can see from here before you are posting the payment so you can select the payment and you can select which account it's going who is the sales ref 
because some company having option that means sales will do by one sales team and the payment collection is doing by collection team so we can have two individual person for the receipt and we can have it for the invoice as well so there is a drop down but if i'm looking as one of the new feature and the it's little relevant feature for the now nowadays company because who is dealing with the largest environment with the collection team so they know this payment is received by this stuff so in other software as, as a consultant i have seen this option in only in the sales screen so you can filter your sales invoice by the sales rep but of course in sage we have the option we can filter payment history by the sales rep so this is one of the aging report for the receivable and payable also aging report we have but i just add uh, aging report for receivable so you can see by the days from 30 to 180 and the total balance and report date and the top part is i hoped it but you can have this format in your own font and design and the heading with your company logo we can design any of the report even the balance sheet trial balance you can have it with your presentable format with your logo and your colors so this is normal trial balance default report which you are having and we can have the grouping in the trial balance by the account type i just taken by arranged by a pound number so it's starting from five to nine so it's second page of the trial balance i just taken to demonstrate so here we can filter it or we can arrange it by the account name or account type and we can have the trial balance clearly and this is also customizable you can remove which column you don't want if you don't want the previous year debit and previous year credit you can remove that and you want to add the department here we can add that and this is also customizable and here you can have multiple format for the cust uh, trial balance you can have two three with previous year details without previous year details so it is some time if you are thinking i don't i cannot use my trial balance with the account names are long so i cannot take it in this way i want landscape yes we can configure to that sites also all the reports are really uh, we can customize for some certain extreme and this is the income statement in here i add with budget and budget variation so because i want to tell that we have gl budget option also in the system we can configure our gl budget here so it will give the variation percentage in the, this database i didn't configure total budgets so it's showing the variation is zero so here also we can take it by group so it's showing me the income statement gross profit and the expenses i'll go for the second page so here you can see total income and these names and everything also we can customize it so going for the report the another important report which is balance sheet so in the balance sheet also same concept you can look the balance sheet i just taken the name and the number and the actual value so if you want to add the department or if you want to add the uh, group or head of his branch you can add it in the here so and if you want to keep one blank line for after exporting in the excel you want to fill some data because this report can be exported all the reports are can be exported to pdf and excel even txt format you will support if you integrating with some tab delimited file format with some other software which is some software is needed only txt file to export and import it to the app system so we can do that also so this is the balance sheet second page it's uh, showing the equity liability portal so if you've seen here i showed in the 
first screen in the account creation 9250 this is a heading account so after in the heading account you can see 010203 this everything is a sub account so even in the this is made for the salary account so if you have the expenses also by mobile expenses you can create as a one line mobile expenses in that below you can add one two four your each on everybody employees contact numbers landline so you have a report total mobile expenses and individual employee mobile expenses and which is the, supposed to show you one of the another feature who using the small softwares the security wise it is very less you can control up to certain limit that means only 10 rules 15 rules but in sage access permission you can go for the each and every module and you can give the permission to add or delete or access for that same module you can remove complete access from the module module by module inside the module you can go for the transaction by transaction so we have all the modules are already uh, configured here what and all module you purchase it will come here so we can as an example i can completely block ar site for the complete uh, one group and i can allow only purchase to that group so we can have the security level also there in that range so this is some key points and i'm sorry because uh, we cannot show complete system in 14 minutes so but and all you have the question yeah you can put it to me so i can give you if is it short terms if it's possible to do it now any questions so far Uh, I can hear someone is trying to ask something, but it's not clear to me. Oh, there is one option called Q and A. You can write the question there. I'm the co-organizer. Uh, Ralph, we have a couple of questions. Hello. Hello, yeah, go ahead. Uh, we have a couple of questions during the registration. Uh, the first question is regarding the number of companies we support in Sage 200. Uh, number of companies, unlimited companies, and it's a concurrent users. So it's backend is from the SQL. You can create any number of companies. That doesn't matter. Okay, so uh, we Come can on. it will support multiple companies, right? Yeah, that uh, completely based on your SQL version because there is SQL standard version and one is paid version. So SQL standard is going up to fifteen GB. So what is your data size and what is the your server size? Only that, but we don't have any restriction in the Sage per side. It's unlimited company. Okay, clear now. Okay. I think there is one question in the chat. Uh, is consolidation of subsidiaries companies available? Uh, consolidation company, it means if is it, they have two, three companies in the two, three trade license and you have to take it in the consolidated report. Yeah, sorry, we don't have that feature here. And second uh, one is in same company as a branch accounting. Yes, we have head office and branch account we can maintain so if is it they have a branches we can add to this uh, module uh, another one is we having one question okay okay so uh, yes we can pull from some other software not all the transaction there is some transaction if you are pulling the journal entries yes we have if i'm telling basically we have option to import the data by excel for the master files and the journal entries 
so we can import that but so transaction if you are trying to import all the sales bills and the purchase bill yeah it's not possible in the system but if you are moving from this system to another system yes we can import your opening balance and the master file for starting the company with the uh, I think we also received the same kind of uh, one question. Uh, can we use switch 50? So can can we transfer the master data into the stage 200? I think you already answered that question, but the same kind of question. Okay. So that is uh, another one thing I have to uh, point here, Joby, because uh, our team is strong enough to do some migrations also because we will check the database and we will look the complete requirement because it's based on the data type. So if is it inventory, it's not that strongly linked with their database, yes. So we can evaluate the data and we can give the percentage this much we can transfer it and give for your new system. So that is we can check the data and we can give some answers for that because my consultant team will evaluate complete database because from the system to system, even though, as an example, the customer, sometimes they are using CH50 US. In that, they maintain only sales and journal. They never maintain uh, inventory. So those kind of data, yes, we can export it to the Excel and we can do some workaround and we can try to import it. So that answer, yes, I can give it after checking complete data without that we cannot uh, give 100 percent assure answer for that yeah i think that's clear clear okay. any other questions there is a, there is one more question now. okay yeah, that is regarding, I think you touched in during the demo, that is uh, regarding the reverse search mechanism in stage 200. Yes, we already have in that because we have the reverse charge mechanism voucher. So just I can demonstrate to that module for that who is the relevant customer, just share me the name. I can have a one short call with him and in the actual system, I will show him how to do that reverse charge mechanism. And of course, we have the reverse charge uh, report also. Basically, that report will be tax will add 5% and it will re reverse 5%. That is clearly with the date and the voucher number, it will generate the report. So I can show that one in the remote for him as a personal demo if he's interested. Okay, clear, clear. So then there is one last question that I think that also you mentioned regarding PDC. Is PDC is available for in and out? Joby, I'm sorry, I didn't. Got... This uh, PDC management possibility check. Yeah, it is available for in and out. I think they are asking for supplier and customer. Yeah, both side we have because uh, really the PDC is working in the exact how it should affect to the account that means whenever you posted the payment while using the pdc it will not reflect to your bank and it will be like as a one small document because as per the policy pdc check doesn't mean anything it's a piece of paper until it's clearing to your bank so once it cleared it will show you what kind of pds are uncleared in your system so you can select it by the date because sometimes some companies if is it uh, my check is coming 21 22 23 they will look for the end of the week date they will deposit all the check in one day so they in the same order they can select it for the supplier pdc which are all cleared on date because sometimes you are we are issuing the pdc for 31st of june but your customer uh, supplier going to place that check 15th of July. So to maintain the bank reconciliation also, we have a one report and the PDC process while taking and what is the actual process date. So it will affect actual process date to bank. So both sides, I think 
I answered over of the question. So ultimately, it's completely whole cycle is covered in the PDC management in Sage 200. And by the way, it's a core module. Okay, clear, clear. So I think uh, from my side, my part is over. If we don't have any other questions, so I'm just hand over in my presentation to uh, my colleague Simla. So she will take over from here. Um, well, if there are any further concerns or queries in regards to any enterprise software, even specifically to Sage 200, uh, we have the contact information displayed. And, uh, please feel free to contact us on an online demo. Definitely. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Nama team. I think it was a very, very detailed and uh, uh, nice presentation. I hope uh, everyone has benefited from it. And please, please, uh, uh, the audience, anybody has any query, you can feel free to reach out to Reddington or Nama. And we would be more than happy to hear from you. So thank you all for your time. Thanks a lot, Harshil. Thanks for organizing this uh, small webinar and uh, giving us an opportunity to de demonstrate the strength of the product. It's a great product for uh, small to mid-sized companies. And we look forward to a lot of inquiries coming directly either to us or to Reddington. Thank you, everyone, for your precious time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Thank, thank, thank you, John. Thank you, Simran. Thank you, Harshil. Thank for you. For session today. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm.